It's unseasonably cold today. It's March 25th and we're getting some snow. So today what we're going to do is work inside the heated workshop and finish restoring the plow. This is the bottom we'll be working on today. It's a little bit of an unusual design. It's a slat bottom, which uh, you see it's got these slats here which are good for working in heavy clay where you need to reduce the surface area of the mold board. What we still need to do is put a new plowshare and land site on it. The ones that were on here before are just too worn out to be used. Here's the old plowshare. As you can see, it's really worn out. Uh, probably hit a big rock or something there and bent it. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see the markings. It's actually an International Harvester off center. It's not even from the, uh, the original plow bottom, which is fine. You can see they, it got worn out and then the previous owner welded a new strip on uh, to continue using it. So I think it will be best at this point just to make a new one completely. You can see here uh, that's just totally broken and rusted out. It's really thin so I think we'll be better off, like I said, just making a new one from scratch. The replacement is a piece of A36 steel. It's a quarter inch thick. It's 18 inches by 6 inches. We should be able to fabricate a new piece without making any cuts. Really all we need to do is just bend this corner down and we should have, we should be pretty close to the shape that we need. Start by marking the bend. And we'll cut a shallow groove so we can see what we're working with once we heat the steel up. This definitely gives you an appreciation for the phrase strike while the iron is hot. It really only takes uh, maybe 10 seconds for this to cool back down to a point where it just uh, is unworkable again. So I can understand where a blacksmith forge would certainly be a valuable tool. So you can see that the new piece doesn't match up exactly with the original. Uh, I think the original probably wasn't a, a perfect rectangle after all, so um, so we are going to have a slightly different edge here. But that's fine because we're also replacing the land side. We're going to use another piece of new steel for that. So as long as we get that angle cut correctly, the two edges should match up. Well, the initial test fit looks pretty good. Uh, you can see there the, the edge matches up very nicely with the leading edge of the plow. I've still got a little bit to do. You may be able to see down there. Um, it's a little 
rounder. The frog is a little uh, less of an extreme angle than what we've got on the new piece. But um, other than that, I'd say for first try, that's pretty darn good. So I'm going to try to get some holes drilled and get this on there, and then we'll go from there. Here we've got our half inch drill bit. It's a cobalt tip, great for cutting steel. We use a little bit of uh, cutting oil as well. This really helps to keep the, uh, keep the bit sharp. It'll last a lot longer, save some money in the long run, and the work goes a lot faster with it. Now that we've got the plowshare bolted on, it's time to fit the land side. The land side will go on the back here. As I said, we, uh, we bent over this part of the, um, of the plowshare. So what we want to do now is mark where we want to cut this angle here so that the two edges meet up. If you don't have time to run to the pharmacy, iron shavings make a great health supplement. Just sprinkle it on your food, and you're good to go. Looks like we've got a pretty good fit there, so let's go ahead and drill the land side and get it bolted on. The bolts we're using are plow bolts. They're conical shaped, but they have a square base. So the idea is that uh, that square base will rest in uh, in the bottom of the hole that's been drilled and keep the the bolt from spinning while the nut is tightened. And the hole should flare out so that um, so that the top of this bolt can rest flat. I mean, simply drilling a hole. Um, isn't going to be good enough. What we need to do is flare the hole out and make sure that the opening of the hole at the deepest part is square. So I'll use a Dremel tool to do that. So I've done quite a bit of work to grind all the holes to, uh, to get these plow bolts to fit flat. Uh, I don't want to take too much out of the plow, so I think what I'm going to do is just grind the the head flat on what's left and then uh, that should give us a nice smooth surface to drag through the soil. The test fit went well, time to get this thing out to paint. We've got the high-tech paint booth set up and ready to go so we're gonna start with some rust inhibiting primer. The weather has warmed up significantly. It's been a little over a week since I painted the plow bottom. So the paint is dry and it's time to get this plow bottom put on the frame. You may notice here that uh, the other plow bottom is missing a little paint. Well, I got impatient and took the plow out with just the one bottom on it and gave it a try. I've got to say it works pretty well, but uh, adjusting a plow is definitely an art. It's going to take a little time to get everything dialed in, but for now let's get this second bottom put on. Now 
another project complete. We've got our 1946 Ford two bottom plow completely restored and ready to go.